ريتشارد فولك وهو أحد كبار المفوضين الخاصين التابعين للأمم المتحدة في الشؤون الفلسطينية أيضا كان موجود في المؤتمر عملنا معاه مقابلة عن حكم محكمة العدل الدولية إزاي يتم تطبيقه إزاي نقدر نوصل لأن إسرائيل تلتزم بما جاء في محكمة العدل الدولية هل المحكمة هيكون عليها ضغوط هل المجتمع الدولي هيضغط على إسرائيل ولا هيضغط على المحكمة خلينا نشوف الأول فيديو تعريفي بريتشارد فولك وبعدين نتابع مقابلته مع آخر كلام So Richard, um, what do you thought about the um, ICJ resolution yesterday? Was it good? Was it a good start or not? Well, from the point of view of the International Court of Justice, it was a historic decision, the most important ruling of its entire existence. From the Palestinian point of view, it was a great victory, symbolically, of enormous influence on civil society and activists everywhere in the world. It will have a mobilizing effect. Whether Israel and the countries supporting Israel, uh, especially the U.S. and U.K., uh, comply or uh, put pressure on Israel to comply, is very doubtful in my view and therefore you have what I call a crisis of implementation and enforcement. You, can got, you have the law on your side but you need the political will to enforce the law and that is probably not going to happen and therefore the hope of the Palestinians is that the weight of the decision will activate enough political pressure so their own governments change their position. Okay, the, this political pressure, maybe um, give it the second question about how to force Israel to follow up the decision of the ICJ. The most obvious way would be for the U.S. to break its special relationship and uh, more or less say that uh, Israel, if it wants the support of the West, must comply with the rulings of the court and must establish a ceasefire because the rulings of the court although they don't use the language of ceasefire if they're taken seriously and in good faith they approximate the outcome of ceasefire because they among other things uh, forbid any further killing of Palestinians and they uh, order that uh, uh, humanitarian assistance not be interfered with. And so there is the possibility with a massive political effort that Israel will be forced to comply. And it's possible also that Israel within its own borders will begin to question whether it is doing the right thing from its selfish point of view. South Africa, you remember, abandoned apartheid because it was didn't want to be a pariah state in the world. And I'm not sure whether uh, Israelis want the consequences of being a pariah state, which it is now, uh, to uh, 
cast a shadow over their own future. And I know that Netanyahu is a very unpopular leader, and so it provides an, a, a slim, not a good opportunity, but a small opportunity uh, for transforming the Israeli political perspective. Okay, the ICG gave Israel one month to prepare a report about what they are doing in Gaza regarding the genocide. Do you think it's easier to the international community to put pressure on the ICG during this month rather than put a pressure on Israel? Um, well, I think both are complementary. I don't think they work against each other. And I think it's, in my view, rather doubtful that Israel will submit the report it will more likely say that this uh, outcome was not in accord with uh, international law, that they didn't respect international law in reaching the conclusion favorable to the South African uh, request for provisional measures. So my sense is that there will be uh, no formal uh, implementation of the decision in the short run, in other words, in the next month. I hope I'm wrong. Thank you. Thank you very much.